Hi friends, it's Wendy here. It's February 1st here in New Mexico, already February 2nd in Australia. This time of year marks a lovely combination of festivals. In the Northern Hemisphere, it is the festival of Imbolc, a seasonal festival that marks the first stirrings of life after the depths of winter. And then the opposite is happening in the Southern Hemisphere. It's the festival of Lammas or Lunasa. Lunasa is the first harvest of the autumn season so it's coming out of summer so here in the northern hemisphere we're coming out of winter and then it's the first hints of coming out of summer in the southern hemisphere i'm down at my local canyon and there's a beautiful stream running behind me mostly it's frozen this pond behind me is frozen and underneath the water, the melted water is trickling down. You might be able to hear it. And I think that this energy kind of symbolizes the properties of Imbolc. It's the hidden stuff that's happening underneath, this stirring of life. Imbolc is connected with the goddess Bridget in the Celtic tradition. She's the energy of the bright flame. Imbolc is a fire festival in that it takes a lot of energy for a seed to sprout its newness under the surface, to break through. I know when it was in bulk in Melbourne, I used to see the first hints of the new bulbs breaking through the surface of um, daffodils and jonquils and such. I don't get to see that here in this landscape, but what I do feel is a quickening energy, an enlivening energy, a sense that, oh yeah, spring's going to come. You know, you can still see there's snow in the background and I think we're expecting more snow today. So it's definitely not the end of winter. It's just a reminder that winter is going to end and it's going to be followed, of course, by spring. To me, the thing that connects Imbolc and Lammas is the energy of the seed. So at Lammas, the first harvest, it's the gathering of the seed, the gathering of the grain, the first gathering of that grain, and the plant willingly releases its past self and concentrates itself into this new life, this seed, the grain. But that very same grain is falling into the ground, lying dormant over the winter, and then that very same grain will be the one that's stirring to new life at Imbolc. So that energy of the seed, to me, is the property of both Imbolc and Lammas. So ideas for celebrating these festivals. At Imbolc, for me, it's very much a fire thing, as I said. So I'll be meditating into a candle. I'll be writing my lists of what I'm hoping to accomplish for this next phase, this feisty, fiery, creative phase of the year. And of course, this year, these festivals coincide with the new moon. And today is the Lunar New Year, the beginning of the year of the tiger. I've worn a red scarf in honor of the Lunar New Year. So there's already this lovely sense of new beginning, of a beginning of a whole new cycle. So definitely on the Imbolc side of our planet, we can harness both those energies together. And it's like, right, feisty new energy. How am I going to channel it? What am I going to create? Where am I going to direct it? It's a strong, bright kind of maiden energy warrior energy in some ways. Then in the southern hemisphere with Lammas coinciding with the new year, we can also think about, well, what are we harvesting right now in our lives? What are we ready to begin to say, yes, I've achieved this, to look back over the work we've done and say, wow, look what I've created, look what's being created, and then celebrate that through maybe making a loaf of bread or baking a cake or giving, especially giving thanks to Mother Earth for growing this amazing food of ours. So in bulk, Lammas, it's powerful, powerful energy. Lots of lovely, simple ways that you can celebrate this marker of the turning of the seasons. It's exciting. I wish you a very happy Imbolc, Northern Hemisphere, Lammas, Southern Hemisphere, and for all of us, because the moon always unites us, regardless of which hemisphere, it is the new moon. Well, as soon as I see the crescent, I'll call her the new moon. Right now I'm calling her the dark moon because she's not visible in our skies. But let's say the new moon. And she unites the whole planet, regardless of whether we're in autumn or spring, Lammas or Imbolc. The new moon is there opening us up to new possibilities, reminding us that cycles continue ever onward. Blessed be.